pressing business before we start. We do have some stuff to talk about afterwards, so I'm really hoping we have time. Okay, uh, library. You have two. No, it's cemetery. Cemetery? Cemetery. You want to go to the cemetery first? No, the cemetery was the second he asked for somebody who had made a presentation, made a presentation request. So, well, I, I, I think. Okay. Well, I should go because they have to go to the community. But I'll stick around for the cemetery. All right. So, okay. library, library first. Then. So, you have two? Wait, there's two, library, two libraries? Yeah. Whichever one you want to do first. Um, let me just. Uh, I'm Al Weinberg. I'm on the Library Board of Trustees. I'm also on the Secretary Committee, and I'll be talking to you about that later. This is Jack Zakowski, who's on our building committee. And this is Patrick Rizzo, who's the Library Director. So uh, we have two proposals, um, and, and uh, I'm going to distribute them, and I'll let the piece of them talk a little bit more about them. But uh, the first one is for out the landscaping in the Children's Garden. The new library. These are both for the new library, not the old, not Goodwin. Um, we've kind of talked to Goodwin in the past, but this is for the new library. This is, uh, excuse me, I'm just pass that around. This is the first one for the uh, landscape. Well, I'll just, if I can just, if you, uh, just uh, talk about a couple of minutes about the, uh, why we're asking for this. If anybody hasn't seen the new library, by the way, this is what it's going to look like on Middle Street, and this is what it looks like with, next to Goodwin. Oh, okay. Nice. this way? Okay. Actually, I can just leave it here. Nice. Yeah, it's going to be a really nice building, and it's, it's, it's important that it be a nice building because it's sitting on Middle Street. You know, it'll be where the hooker um, is, but it'll be taken down. So we thought it was very important that the building looked like a good building, but Looks like a town building, looks like something, and um, uh, that was our main purpose. The budget for the library is seven point nine million dollars, which includes seven point, uh, I'm sorry, three point nine from the state, three point seven from the town, and three hundred thousand dollars for from uh, our capital campaign, our fundraiser. Okay, so. Um, when we bid the, um, and, and about a million aid of that is, is, is earmarked for, or already spent for, the architect, the engineers, the furnishings, uh, contingencies. Okay, so we have that set aside. Uh, <clears throat> when we, and the rest is the building, putting the building up. We were hoping that the bids would come in around 5.8 or a little bit less. We really don't, we have no control of what the bids are, but that's what we were hoping for so that we could do everything we wanted to do in the building, which includes putting a metal roof on, putting solar arrays, the landscaping, and the um, better wood. Uh, yeah, better interior furnishings. Those four things were, were broken out separately, and, when the, and we asked that people bid for the building plus those four, thi those four things separately. So we would have some flexibility. If the bids came in high, which they did, we, we, we could drop things out. So the bids came in considerably higher than expected. Um, for the building, it was about $6.1 million instead of 5.8 or 5.7. So we've had to, um, and we think the reason for that is, well, there are a number of reasons. The masonry, the, the bids for the masonry, which is the exterior, came in higher than the architects thought they would. The steel came in quite a bit higher. I think maybe the tariffs had something to do with that. And uh, generally, it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty, not a difficult building to build, but it's complicated. So I think maybe that had something to do with it. But we did get six bids, and they were all very close. So it wasn't like, you know, you get a cheater or something. This is what the industry says the buildings will cost. So when that happened, we, looked, we had to get the sharp and pencils up and start knocking things out. When we knocked out the, we're either going to defer or eliminate certain things. Right now, no, no solar array. And that's a shame because if we had that, the building would, be, would pay for itself, uh, say for the town, the electrical costs. I mean, the building's going to be tight and efficient, but we wanted that array. And we may still get it down the road because it can be added later. But right now, it's not in play. Metal roof, which make the, make the building last longer, <coughs> that's not in play. Uh, the landscaping is not in play. Um, 
Now we're committed, we have to do the landscape and replace it. We have said we do. And that's about $35,000, that's what the field was. So we're, we're scurrying to get that somewhere. We can pay, we can divert money from uh, our furnishings and our technology and the computers and the, all the stuff inside the land. We can divert that to, to the landscaping and, uh, and also to make up about $60,000 that we're short for the building. So we, it'll get, it'll happen, but not without a cost to the quality of, the, of, the, of what the library will be. And that's why we're here today. We, we, we've identified two things which we think would qualify for um, uh, uh, community preservation. One is in open space recreation, the landscaping work, and the, um, uh, the children's garden. I think that, that is a qualifying project, and that's uh, $38,000, and we think that we can, um, oh, we know that we can we talk to people about donating equipment, time, so we think we can get that for about $28,000, and that's what we're actually asking for, not the, 30, not the 35, not the original bid, but the 28, which is so, so we'd be paying 20%, but we get getting, getting from donations. The other part, the other project is Historical related, <coughs> which uh, flows from the fact that we have a Hadley history room in the building, about 225 square foot. And the point of that is to make our history of the town more accessible to people. Um, and to have programs there, exhibits, uh, materials that we have on loan from the historical society or, or from the town hall to exhibit. And, and of course, the building's accessible and it's open quite a long, you know, many hours. So we're hoping to be able to educate people with, about Hadley's history with that room. The other room that we're asking for help on is the community room. And now the community room is gonna serve many purposes, not just historical, but historical will be part of it. We'll have programs, historical, historical society, we'll have their programs, some of their programs there. Um, we'll have exhibits. And uh, so we thought that those two rooms, the cost of those rooms would be partially defrayed by CBA. We're asking for 50% of the history room, and that comes up to about $59,000. And the way we figured out the cost was the square foot, the cost of the building is about 529 square foot, $529 times 225, that comes up to about 120,000. So half of that would be um, and what we're asking for the CPA for that. The community room, we're only asking for 10% of the cost of their room, and uh, the remainder of that will be made up by uh, the state grant, and we also we have a, a significant donation for that room that will apply to it. So that's, that's the, um, the gist of what we're asking and why we're asking for it. And Jack yeah. has worked on the landscaping quite a bit, so we can talk a little bit more about the donations if you like. Sure, I'll take it a little bit further. When we saw that, we weren't going to be able to do any of the alternates, that the bids came in much higher than planned because of the delays, because of the tariffs. Uh, there was one alternate that still must happen, and that's the plantings around the building. That's something we committed to. And we're keeping the same landscaping scheme as the senior center, so it'll match from one building to another. Uh, we set up a meeting, and Tom Giles from Halley Garden Center joined us and we went line by line, plan by plan, and we looked at the cost. Um, we also um, met with Mike Weinzer uh, and spoke with Greg Lamasta. And all three of them said that they would chip in. They know this is an important project for the town, and they would help. If you take a look at the Children in Public Garden uh, application, uh, I think it's the third page in, you actually see all the costs broken down. The first column has to do with the specified cost based on the bids, the cost per plant, and then the total cost. What Tom Giles was willing to do to help out the town, and what he did is he looked at the whole, um, the whole lot of plants, uh, and his price would come in at about fifteen thousand uh, dollars. Originally, the landscape architects and the estimators. Thought they'd be at about twenty-two thousand. Uh, he said he'd knock off another thirty-three percent to help us out. He could come in at about ten thousand for what they had said would probably cost twenty. Uh, Mike Weinsick 
at Winesex Nursery. There's a few more things that he's able to donate that wouldn't cost us anything. Uh, and some of the plants on the list he just doesn't have. So um, you see his numbers come in significantly less. Grego Masta said for the 13 big trees that we're putting in around the library, uh, he would help dig the holes uh, and get, get us started on the planting. So we have volunteers come in and do some of that work. So instead of $12,000 to do all the planting, it would be less. So really, um, when we saw that the budget for the building was cut, the bids were coming in high, we looked at ways of cutting the cost. And there are some citizens in Hadley that really rose to the occasion to do that. Uh, we do note on page two that there's a number of other library projects that involve planting, so there's plenty of precedent. Um, with the most recent on July 13th, Sutherland opened their river walk what they did and they had gotten some CPA funding for um, a roughly similar project. I just want to uh, add, um, this is a planting plan, this is a larger version of the planting plan. And you can put this here and this is the, the floor plan that showed that highlights the history room and the community room for the other projects. So you guys can have that as well. Okay, brief, uh, before we start our questions and discussion, I should have done this at the very beginning. Um, the library pays me to do chest work, $250 a um, Now that, technically that, that doesn't place me in a conflict of interest situation because the uh, CPA committee is not the controlling authority of the money. But I wanted to ask if anyone has a, a problem with my being in this position and if you do, I will withdraw for the remainder of the discussion. So, you're head of the chess club? Yes. For the children or yes. for everybody? Well, for everybody. You might. And Andy and for everybody else on the committee, before you open up for questions and answers, I think it's important for you all to know that the garden around the Goodwin Library now is maintained by volunteers. Uh, there were also a number of volunteers who were involved with this planning of how can we do it cheaper, how can we do it better, how can we create something simple yet appealing and easy to maintain in the future. There were a couple of plants that uh, didn't do well around the Goodwin that were cut off the list for this. But again, maintaining something similar to what the senior center will have. These are not the gardens of Versailles. This is sort of a simple plan um, just to make the library look good. Why do you call the children's garden? Um, well, yeah, in the, in the, the, there's two ends of the building that most of the landscaping will happen on. The Mill Street side, which is which looks like the good one, will, will be basically trees and, and uh, you know, benches or something like that. That will be mainly for rooks and people you know, from the bike path to sit there. On the other side, on the, the west side, east, east side, east side east where the children's room is, yeah. right up there, There'll be a place for the kids to whatever. And we're calling it the children's garden. It's a fence. It's a fence container. Yeah, we we'll use we'll have some area. Some rock. We're actually going to hopefully use some of the components of Booker. Some of the uh, window and the door frames. If they hope, if they if we're able to salvage them in one piece, we might use that to use as, as accent pieces and that part of pieces of granite. Yeah, for granite. Yeah. yeah. Okay, any questions or comments? No, the landscaping plan was exactly as submitted to the planning board. Yeah, what yes. you're looking at here is, that is the plan, I believe, right? Yeah. Yes. You can modify that plan. The only thing off the list that uh, we're suggesting be cut is the bearberry, because when they planted some around the Goodwin, it just didn't last, it didn't grow. So there was one ground cover plant that we're saying should get cut off the list. But the garden area is not going to be a reception dining area. Oh, no, 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 no. 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 And, and when we say recreation, you know, open space, mostly recreation, passive recreation. So how much money is being requested from the CPA fund? 28800 Okay, and the total cost is $36,000. Yes. So it's 
20% is in-kind donations. Okay, the first question I have is what happens if you don't get the, what happens if you don't get your 20%? Um, they committed to that and there's a chance it could even be more than 20% based on their donations. For example, Mike Weinzig said, I've got some arbor vitis that are even bigger than what you were looking for, I'll just give them to you for free. The, the bottom line is, if, is whatever we come up short on, we'll have to make it up in some, somewhere else. We'll have fewer furnishings and technology and stuff inside the building. Because we do have a budget for you, you know, the furnishings and stuff. That's our, that's what we'd have to do. Yes. We'd have to make it up. I mean, the landscape is going to happen. Right. Maybe, you know. right. And one thing that I've been, uh, I don't know if anybody on the committee has been in the same position, but people have come up to me and said, hey, I hear you're on the CPA. That, you guys are doing a great job. But we're approving projects for the town, and the maintenance of those projects come out of the town's budget. And so, yes, it's a good idea that the CPA is here to do these projects, but in the end, it's kind of like costing the town double because they're paying with their tax contribution from the CPA, then they're paying for the upkeep and maintenance of the projects that the town should have built anyway. So currently, the gardens around the Goodwood yeah. are being maintained by volunteers. Is that going to happen in the new library? But you get the volunteers, that's the idea. The assumption is that the, that the volunteers that we have now, because they are also library patrons and you know, boosters of the library, that their services will continue in the new location. And that's why they were involved um, in the planning meetings and a number of them committed to say, we'll help out in the future. Yeah, well, though, as long as it's something there, yeah. You understand what I'm getting at. It's just that we're, doing, we're approving projects that benefit the town, yes. and the town's getting a double whammy because they're, we're approving projects that the, their tax revenue has supported, and the maintenance and upkeep of those projects come out of the town budget, which means that the budget has to increase. Yeah. The so, good news, too, is if you take a look, a lot of the, the trees at the top of the list, once they're established, shouldn't need much care. Mm -hmm. And really, um, the perennials and the grasses at the bottom of the list, the daylilies, once they're established, kind of take care of themselves. Um, some of the shrubs will need a little more care every year just to trim the back a little bit. Yeah, now, uh, what is it like it says uh, the, under deciduous trees? Under Wine Six Nursery 325 slash 325, what does that mean? So what that means is the cost per plant and the total cost. So we're looking at one piece of dogwood, which uh, Mike Wine Six would okay, so provide. It, but if you take a look at the Cornelian cherries, there are three, mm -hmm. each at 225 for a total cost of 625. Okay, I just want to make sure I understand. Yeah, thank you. Hold on. Yeah, I guess. Anyone else? How does prevailing wage fit into this? Uh, the state says that everything has to go out the no, bid. No, and you well, have no, it's over ten thousand dollars. It's over ten. Okay, so this is well, you know, it's, well twenty-eight. If it is, it is. I mean, and prevailing wage applies for. Um, uh, the, um, working, the you know, landscaping work, that would be prevailing wage. So that, that would, but it doesn't, anybody, it know, doesn't apply to materials like trees. It may, it may not. We, that's that's un unclear. But obviously, whatever the bidding requirements, the, the, the procurement requirements are, we'll have to go by them. So if that, if that hurts us in some way down the road, we'll just have to you know, deal with it, obviously. The majority of the expenses for the plants, not the labor for planting. And yeah, we can see how that all unfolds yeah. for us. When do you anticipate having to you know buy these things? Any, any town or state has to go through the prevailing wage of the bidding process? Yeah, yeah. 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 It doesn't help. Yeah. Yeah. Everything that's done in any of the buildings in town has to state. 
question. Do they, do they respond to the time they wait? Well, they're, they're all on vacation, but yeah. they said by our next meeting, they, they, they can get back to us. Are you doing well. anything special about this historical room? Um, if, if objects, historical objects, are going to be stored in it, um, it's just going to be a regular room, right? Well, it'll have climate controls. For, you know, not for that particular for, for that, that will be, we'll be able to be specific, specific to that world. Yes. So that, that's part of it. We didn't break it out separately because it's it's all embedded in the in the overall bid for the building. So we thought the simplest thing would be to use the square footage cost. Are there like, like display cases for things? Yeah. I mean, that's all. Is there a, is there a mock-up of the room? No, we don't have a mock-up. I think what, what's important to us is that uh, what we're trying to do really is to provide access to the town's historical resources in a secure, climate controlled fashion. We have, as it is, we have dozens of visitors that come to the library from out of town, in town visitors that come to do genealogy research. We're trying to you know, have a space for people to approach their heritage, maintain the, the collections that we do have, and also have the opportunity to expand the collections that are, or bring things together, bring resources together. We, you know, we often uh, give gifts of old letters, historical artifacts, um, and maps, all sorts of things. So what we really want to do is have this history would be sort of the beginning of a, a more appropriate stewardship for historical resources than the town currently has at its disposal. And I think the, you know, the library is about providing access, about digitizing documents, making them more available to people inside and outside the community. This is the beginning of that, of that project. Any questions? Oh, well, you are can you, nope, can you, you no. <laughs> can you forward this to? Uh, uh, I forwarded everything except for the Windows proposal, which I didn't have. Yeah. And yeah. the guy wrote me back and said, I'm on vacation. Yeah. Can I do it next week? Just. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't disagree. I don't want to say it in public, but I don't disagree with Joe right now. <laughs> but um, the other thing, again, and I'm going to be harping on this for all the projects and as long as I'm on this committee, that we're double dipping again. We're providing funds to do something that is going to cost the town money in their annual budget to maintain. And that's something that I think we as a committee need to start looking at and saying, listen, yeah, we'll fund this thing, but you got to come up with the money to maintain it on your own. Don't come to see well, I don't think CPA money can be used to make it. No, it can't. Period. It can't, but it's going to come out of the town budget's coffers. So the taxpayers are going to pay double. Right. Well, I guess you could say that, but the, yeah. I mean, the library's already approved, and, and we're going to have to maintain the library. Right. One of the things we're trying to do with the library, though, and I think all the other buildings, is make them very sustainable and very efficient so that the cost over time is less than it would be, say, if you had an old building. You know. So I, I so no, fair, I, I think I'm not a fair point. Right. You have to look at the big picture, for sure. Oh, yeah, I understand that. And I know that. But it's just people are coming up to me and saying, hey, we like what you're doing. Well, it's costing the town a lot of money. Well, and I'm just passing on that information. That's all. OK, anything else? Oh, I think it's pretty creative about it, how they um, put the historic and how they got, you know, the CPA. Uh, interesting. Um, okay. Well, we thought it was interesting too the precedent of, again around the state with the other communities, especially around the history rooms, that have done something similar. Yeah. You'd have a room for your map. <laughs> right. It's not my map. <laughs> well, the map that we are looking at. I'd love to give a report on that later on. Uh, okay. If um, Dan, uh, oh, Dan, so you, close. you were re uh, requesting the 107. One hundred thousand. Right, and that is broken into two pieces. Though. Right. Yeah. I am sure the community was added up. Yeah. Right. Two hundred thousand. Right. Yeah. And one of these I was adding up. There was a, 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 a mistake in addition. Oh, I've done. I'm famous for that. Right. 
Yeah, the whole dollar. Whole dollar? Whole dollar. Okay. Not come out of your time. Better to be a dollar over. Yeah. Okay, one more time. No other comments? Questions? Uh, thank you for your submission. Uh, I think probably one of you coming to the next meeting would be enough. Um, when will that be uh, in Two weeks from tonight. And we'll, we'll mock it around amongst ourselves and see what happens. And it, it has been the precedent of the, the, the CPA that we just approved this and the town meeting right, right, has the final authority yeah. and it's up to the uh, participant or the applicant to sell it to town right, meeting. Right. We're not going to ask you to sell anything. We'll right. just recommend. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. All right. That was good. All right. Three Thanks. proposals in half an hour. That's the next All right. Well, right. thank you. Thank you. Permits, 
So, so first, what, what, is, what existing town bylaws deal with this kind of thing? Signs. Signs. And then, um, what, what other laws in terms of placement or road safety or whatever? And again, to maintain them, it's not going to cost the town to do that. Is it? So in, in the bylaw, sign shall be made of wood, wood composite, simulated wood, or have the overall appearance of wood. And that was from the original historical commission that gave the edict to the planning board to put before the town meeting. Okay. So that was not made up by the planning board. The exterior color of the sign shall be selected from historic colors of American palette. Do you have it's a section 7.4.1 general regulation signs. And it's got the whole listing of size, makeup, location, height. I don't think we'll have any neon on lights over. They're not available. Well, there's some people that love blinking neon lights. <laughs> oh. Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> any, other, any other questions about this particular project? Um, just as a point of order, there are already a couple of signs at Hockenham at each end, which are metal signs, brown metal signs, that have a little bit about Hockenham, um, but they're very small and they're hard to read as you're doing anything. Yeah. But there are actually already signs there, and they're small and they're metal and they're brown. Okay, I, I must admit, I'm only, I'm the representative from the planning board to the CPA committee. I'm only 20% of the planning board. It would be a good idea if you have the sign, the collection, and the location, and come for, before the planning board in a general information section and see how it would fly. Because if all of a sudden we approve the money and somebody has heartburn from somewhere, and because you didn't get the proper authority of okay, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. Be, so the planning board is now going to meet at 6.30 instead of 7. So between 6.30 and quarter 7, you sign up. There'll be general information. Ask the question. Have the pictures and think, this is what we want to do. What do you think? And go over the regulations so that if somebody asks you, you can specifically say, this is what we're going to do. It's the planning board that approves, not the zoning board? Pardon? Planning board is the zoning board. Planning board. The zoning board has nothing to find out. Planning board. Planning, has to approve it. The planning board takes its direction from the town meeting. Okay, okay. So everything in this bylaw is approved by the town meeting. If there's an exception, then the zoning board of appeals has the right to appeal these five jokers on the planning board that didn't know what they were doing. So we want an exception, hence the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay. okay. We do it differently. <laughs> Two things. Uh, all signs along state highways are controlled by the state, not the town. They have jurisdiction over those signs. So most of them would be under the purview of the state. Though we would give permission the permission is given through DPW and the police chief on location. Uh, and sometimes they'll get me involved. I mean, if you want to go by the bylaw and worry about that, you can come into the CPA and get a finding that say what you're doing is no more detrimental than what exists in the areas. But most of those signs along uh, 47 and places like that are all controlled and required by regulation by state and not by state on town statute. Because it's actually on their property. Okay. Sit tight. Okay. All right. Uh, here's how the CPA works. First you get money for the plan. Then you get money to implement the plan. Okay? Your proposal as you submitted it to us is not detailed enough. I am suggesting that you hire a firm to make the plan of exactly where the signs would go and mock-ups of what they're going to look like and what they're going to say. 
and then we will fund that. We will give you the money to pay for the plan, however much, however much it is. Okay? Then you'll have something to present to us and the town with the exact details of everything you want. That will enable you to present it to town boards and to be able to build a consensus. Okay? Uh, I support the historical markers idea. I think it really lacks in our town. But if it's, you know, the courage of our forefathers, then I'm not so thrilled with it. Right? If it's real history, then I'm more supportive. So I want to know what they're going to say and what they're going to look like and where they're going to be. And I know you're not at that point yet. So I would suggest that our committee fund the plan and not the installation. Right. So, or, or uh, fund the plan and not the manufacturer or the installation until the end. Okay. Right, see what I mean? Yes. So I don't know if you can set that up in two weeks, or if you might want to think about it and come back in six months. Or you can decide, no, we, we want to go with what we've submitted, and then we'll just we'll, we'll vote. And maybe you'll win, and maybe you won't. That's, as chair, that's my, that's my suggestion. Because uh, the first thing people are going to ask you is, what are they going to say? <laughs> you know, what are they going to look like? So uh, are they going to be a big word? Yeah. OK. We will follow your advice. OK, well, yes. you know what? You can, you can think it over, and you can come back in, in two weeks, or you could email me and let me know what you decided. But we find yeah. that the more specific you are, the more details you have, the more people support you. Because people just assume the worst if you don't tell them what you're doing. Okay. All right. uh, but I do want to thank you for applying, and I hope that the Historic Commission comes back and, and does more stuff. Uh, you can call any member of the committee early on in your application process, and we can help you this is what I would have said to you. All right. So we're not rejecting it, right? We're just telling you we think you could do that. All right. Okay. Any, anything else? Sure. Okay. Thank you. You don't have to stay. <laughs> We have the location, so we, okay. um, but we just wanted to know whether there would be some funding to get going. I, I think we'll find out. Well, signs are always problematic for CPA. We'll find out if it's approved use, right? And then we'll fund the plan, okay. and then you can, everybody will know what you have. At least that's what I think. Sure. All right, one uh, is Russell School. Thank you. Uh, well, I apologize. I don't have a copy of the application on my but we, uh, Municipal Building Committee, is looking for to do two things for the Russell School, and I want to start off by saying, Andy and I, uh, we actually had a very good conversation. I'm really glad that you came in the other day to talk. To me. So, two things we want to try to do. We're we're all looking at Russell School and figuring out what to do. Uh, Andy suggests that we should try to get a professional involved. We do have an on-call architect that we've been working with. He's the one that came up with the initial estimates that we we gave to the select board the other day, which unfortunately is over $22 million to fix up a Russell School in such a way that we could use it. That's a huge chunk of change. And everybody's saying, where are we going to get it? I think what we need to do is step back, come up with a few scenarios, and give it to the select, uh, give it to the select board and the people, and say, "All right, here are some ideas that we can do with it." One would certainly would be to keep it and use it, x amount of dollars. Another one possibly would be just give, remove it. How much does that cost? We don't know. We need to get some um, dollar figures 
It is a very historical building. We need some ideas of what can be done. Uh, maybe we can do a partnership, but we do need some professional services to get us to that point, to figure out what we can do, to propose to everybody. These are the scenarios and what we can do with. Uh, that's a $10,000 figure. I did put in for the, for the full $10,000. Andy said that uh, you, know, you guys um, would prefer just to uh, give us 80%. We can do that. We can get the $2,000. What that's going to take is some money that we have already set aside uh, for some other projects for him. But I think we all can agree this is a very important project to uh, start off with. So if, if it's $8,000 we get for that, it's $8,000. That'll be fine. But that's what we're looking to get a good study give the townspeople and everybody scenarios of what, what are the possibilities of use of that building. And, and do some type of um, work to keep it from really falling apart. We have some very serious issues with that building, especially on the west portico. That west portico is, is sliding down the hill as we speak. Um, and it's getting to the point that it's going to be very serious. And I think this is one of the things that we're going to look to him for and say, what should we do with it? Should we take it down, just the West Portico right now? Or should we try to do something to hold it up? Um, that decision is probably going to be made by what, if we do save the building and whoever uses it, what they're going to add on, because it has to be an addition to it, most likely on the west side. What is that going to be? It's probably going to be a new entrance that's accessible with accessible bathrooms and the like, and an elevator. So that's where it probably go. So the answer might be that we'll probably take it down. But we don't know. Let's put, do a little bit of a study and figure it out. The other is the $8,000. Again, I asked for all that with the Municipal Building Committee, asked for the entire amount. If you don't want to uh, give us the 8000 we can take it out of some other funding that we have, but we prefer not to. What we want to do with that is we're noticing that the roof is starting to deteriorate quickly around the chip. We need to replace some of the slates to keep it from leaking. Okay? We want to do some preservation work to keep it from deteriorating more. Those are the two items at this point that we want to do. Would you describe the roof tiles as emergency repairs? Yeah, it's at, yes, it would be right now as emergency repair because it's such a dire strait. We, uh, if you look inside, Gary and I looked at it again today because we've had some excessive rains and there is a lot of damage that's done on one side of the chimney from the leaking coming down through. And we don't want any more to happen. It was severe. So, is that because the town pulled the maintenance budget for that building? The maintenance. I'm not going to stand here and say that there's no maintenance. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know what the issue is, it, and we, as a municipal building committee, are trying to change that. We brought forward a lot of money. Uh, which uh, they did not support in the past, and we got it to fix up these buildings, and we're going to push some more. Uh, we're at the point that the building is in very bad disrepair. But if we don't do anything right now, it's going to deteriorate so quickly. Just like North Hadley Hall, it's going to be what's, what's going to be left to sell. I agree. Um, and according to the newspaper article, I'd be kind of loath to recommend spending money on a building that the town is going to turn down. Well, we don't know what we're going to do. Certainly, we well, can all stand there and figure that out. Well, that, to me, that well, are we allowed to discuss it even though we don't have a formal application? Uh, we, 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 have we, a, we, we have a formal application. I, I, I haven't seen it. So. Actually, I thought it was 18000 Well, yeah, it's, it's, ten, it's, ten, yes, it's 18000 so, 10000 yeah, for the architect. So, question. Statement number one, uh, at the last planning board meeting, someone from the building committee came forward and said the town is going to take some of the land from Russell School and make extended parking for the town hall. 
personnel. Basically, that is saying that building is not going to be saleable. Because once you've taken the parking away, all you've got is the building. Who the hell's going to buy the building if you have no parking available under uh, the basic bylaws? Used. So, parking what? is parking. Hmm? Parking is parking. It can be mutually used by more than one factor. That's what we're looking uh, at for the future. I don't think anyone would buy it if the town is going to say, we're using that parking and we're going to share it. So, I think the decision is already being made. It's gone from 10 million to 22 million. The consulting business is a unique one. Depends who you ask is what kind of response you, you're going to get. We all know that. How could it go from 10 million to 22 million? And once again, if I hear criticism from people, it's that we spend $80,000 on a new stainless steel roof for Hooker School, the steps we repaired, the door we repaired, the other entrance, all CPA money, and then we tear it down within a few years. Why should we repeat the folly again with Russell School? We know it's going to be torn down. The town is not going to spend $22 million well, to well, repair it. Let me uh, respond to that because I was at your meeting about the well, uh, yeah, parking. Yeah, made the presentation. So, the idea for parking was for the safety of people at Town Hall instead of backing out on the Middle Street. I don't disagree and, with that. Right. And you and everybody else agreed at um, planning board that it was at least a decent idea to start with. Um, and Joe brought up all this stuff about Russell School. The thing is, with Russell School, we really don't know. And when we were at the selectmen's meeting last week, they wanted to form another committee to work with oh. our committee. Well, whatever. But the idea was, because nobody knows what they can do, where we can get funding, not just coming to you people, but is there state funding, uh, historical funding somewhere? And we're, we're trying to figure out what they can do because a lot of people in town are saying, we're not going to spend $20 million. But, but there's another group of people that hit, didn't see that building go. Some people are saying, if it's too expensive, knock it down and then wait until we figure out if we need a town hall annex and we build something else in that spot because it's prime real estate. We wouldn't want to get rid of that center of town spot anyhow. So, as you can see, between Tim and I, is this idea, this idea, we're going all over the world, but that's why we need to study to find out the cost of tearing it down, the cost of fixing it, possibility of a partnership. partnership. Um, and the other thing is, our committee really does not want to see that building keep deteriorating right in the center of town, and it looks like heck. North Hadley Hall looks like heck sitting there, and we do the study. Hopefully, somebody in town is going to make a decision where we're going to say, okay, tear it down. Okay, spend the money. But right now, we can't keep going in 15 directions, but we need this money for Larry Tuttle to do the, the study on the possibilities to go back to the select and, and present it to them as they ask. Am I correct on that? That's right. And we're not asking for a lot of money. It's going to be. A quick study. Uh, that's you're asking for eighteen thousand. Yes. Right? Ten thousand is for the study. Yes. And Eight thousand is for the work. Correct. Roof repairs. Yes. So, yes. so for specifically for the roof repairs. Mm -hmm. So if it ends up costing five thousand dollars to fix the roof, then you have to stop. If there's something else that needs work, you can't use that. Remainder of that portion to fix the other We project. totally understand that. Okay. Yeah, we um, understand that. It's, it's, again, it's not our money, it's the, town's, it's the town's money. We have, I mean, we do have some money uh, set aside. We, we have prioritized all of our projects. So this re this request is to do both. Okay. Am I, am I correct. correct? Correct. To, um, to recommend $10,000 for professional services for report on recommendations to the town to minimize future deterioration. Mm -hmm. Does it say what to do with the building? Well, that's basically 
the stuff yes. the deterioration and the yeah. right. Well, and yeah. if you want it modified, we can modify the well, Who did the study to say it's going to cost twenty to twenty-two million to repair? I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Who did that study to gave the estimate twenty to twenty-two? Architectural million? insights are on. Well, Wasn't that a study? Somebody paid money. Yes. Yeah. Well, we paid why for are that. doing another study? And it was deemed unsafe 10 years ago. I mean, we're just throwing money at something that is obviously not going to make Because it. people want facts. They want figures. They well, don't. We, everybody says, well, how much is it going to cost to tear it down? We don't know. How much, how much, and that's where the first study came from. Everybody looked at us and said, how much is it going to cost to fix? We could give you a guess, but now we have that exact figure. So you've got 22 million to fix it. I bet if you ask a couple of deconstruction companies, roughly how much will it cost? Give us an estimate. It's not going to cost 18,000 for that no, company. To we didn't up. say it's going to cost 18,000. We said 10,000. But people want the facts, Joe. We're we're being asked not. We need to bring in a professional. So that professional standing here and say, hey guys, this is what I've done. This is my figures. Instead of us, which has happened with us as a town committee, we work out those figures and everybody goes, well, we don't believe it. So we're trying to do what everybody's asking us. That's all. Right. There's, there's different factions who want different things done with this building. And we need to be able to compare them. Mm -hmm. We have you know, to compare and, it. And that's something that hasn't been done yet. Can I quote from this master plan? Yep. Yep. Can I quote from the Hadley master plan? The new one? The new master this plan? Is, well, the I have the revisions. But we did not go over this part of the book. This is the original master plan. Oh, okay, the original master plan, not the revised one? Uh, the re revised parts, uh, I, I do have them. This part was not revised. The part that uh, the update from 2015, where I was at that meeting. Um, there's, a, there's a new up-to-date one, and I don't remember preservation of Russell School even making the town top twenty. Regulatory protections and should continue to inventory noteworthy buildings, nominating them to the state historic register. This Russell School, Russell School is on the national historic register. When asked by the townspeople, in your opinion, how important is it that Hadley encourage this type of historic preservation? 35% extremely important. 30% very important. So more than 65% of the town already thinks it's very important or extremely important to preserve these buildings. We're not asking for 22 million. We're asking for 10,000 to find out what it's gonna take well, you know already that it's going to cost $22 million. No, we know it's going to cost $22 million to make the building usable. Yes. What? What? The town. what? But right. Also, we, have, we have estimates from, the, from well, 2013. Here we go. This is, this is stuff that we were to put to CPA. We have a few minutes to talk about okay. this. Okay. We'll get to it. In 2013, the CPA would have paid for $10,000 for the telltale gauges. That finally did happen. I think we paid 4000 Okay, in 2015, the CPA would have paid 252000 for roofing, gutters, carpentry, exterior work, protecting the building envelope and foundation. That's 2015, we should have spent $252,000. Today, that would be more like 350000 In 2019, that's this year, we would have paid $405,000 for multiple masonry projects on the foundation, exterior walls, and chimney, and re rebuild all the exterior steps. That's, good. That's this year we would have paid $405,000. I'm, I'm sure if we went for that estimate today, it would be more like $600,000. This is the deferred project the town should have jumped on mm -hmm. back then. In 2022, the final completion of all of this, we would have paid only $170,000. All of this adds up to less than a million dollars. This is like $850,000 we would spend by 2020 
to get this work done. And this only this this is only to stabilize the building. This is not to make it usable for anything. So just to stabilize the building, to so it was saleable. Now, all of this stuff was pushed aside for North Hadley Hall. Now we can't even sell that building. It's in such bad shape. If we don't take care of some of this stuff now, figure out what to do with it, we're not even that, that property should be absolutely useless. This is one of the oldest towns in the country. This is one of the most beautiful buildings built. I mean, this is this is an old place. Out on the West Coast, they don't have buildings like this. We just want to save this piece of history. So this is something that the Historic Commission should be working on. But the building tried. the we building committee would fucking years. the building committee would like to try to save the one historic property that is definitely worth saving. Not for our generation to pay taxes on, but for the next generation to inherit something that was given to us by a generation that we never met. We never knew these people who pulled these blocks in on horseback, pull, that stuff came in on the train from New, you know, New Hampshire, wherever the granite came from, and they hauled it over with ox and they stacked it up. We never met these people, but we'd surely like to save this building for our children. So all this money you quoted, which CPA has spent that money on that building? Should have, should have spent. Should, should have, have spent. Should have spent. Oh, okay. The town dropped the ball. The town dropped the ball on all of that. All we want is $18,000 to see if we can save the building. And we can put some repairs into it. The, the, the One of those quotes was for the, the roof on the west portico, which should have been done in 2015. Now, if it was done in 2015, the water wouldn't be going through the portico and making it slide down the hill. I agree. I, I don't disagree with you. I, but I your name that. is on this master plan. Yeah, I know. I signed it. It says save these buildings. Yes, what, I agree. What, what, one thing for sure is that if we don't fix the roof, nature will make the decision for us. Right. <laughs> so, so, so if we feel like we want to divide this proposal, we can decide to do that. Um, but just, just keep in mind that we are not, this is not the debate to determine the future of the right. right. I should, I should give an argument for We have to make before. certain debates here. Yes. We can't extend it all to the town meeting. For example, okay, we know it's going to cost 22 million. That was a Somebody got the study and somebody paid for the study. 20 we to did. 22 million. The municipal building. Okay, so you've got together. that study. Done that. So if you put it to a town vote, would you pay $22 million to preserve this old building no, that's or would you tear it down? Yeah, but this, there's a missing component of it here. It may well be that, that the town is not going to spend $20 million. I'm shocked. Okay. okay. But that's $20 million to make that building usable for the town. In the town hall annex. The other piece, and if you look around on all the historic buildings in the valley, never mind the country, where tons of these buildings have been saved by repurposing them or selling them for private use, that, that option has never really been looked at. Well, you and and you can't be looked at if we don't save it. If we can't. But, oh, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. That's why we should save it. Not because the town's going to spend $20 million or not. <coughs> Because maybe somebody out there would value the building to put enough money into it. And that, I mean, there's so many examples of this. That you look at a building that you never no. think would be saved, and somebody steps forward, okay, senior housing, okay, offices. You could, and that building is such an iconic building that, you know, it's just, it'd be a shame. One of our committee members did go to Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and reported that the Pioneer Valley. The, the Planning Commission said that the funds for stabilizing Russell School is an appropriate and best practice use of CPA money for municipal buildings on the National Register, which this building is. It's on the National Register. You want to tear it down? Okay. Well, well, here's, your committee here's, is going to go down. Here's one of here's, good, here's seven points from where I see it. She okay. says a rebuttal. For example, they, the building committee, is going to usurp a lot of the parking that's going to be used for Russell School. That building will no longer be saleable. 
Well, that's so, your opinion, John. No, I don't think well, it is. Nobody's buying. Nobody's buying. Nobody's buying. Nobody's buying. Nobody's buying. It is not what the CPA is here for. We're asking you to give us the money to do this. Right. We're not. Here this to is not a CPA decision on if it is sellable. If we haven't even gone forward with that but, parking lot, so let's put the parking lot aside for now. Because well, quite honestly, because if that building is ever you used, you. you're going to put a parking lot in the in the um, ball, old ball field because that's going to be the entrance. It's not going to be on Middle Street. Joe, come on, let's let's put this stuff aside. You, everybody has their arguments, pro and con. What we're just trying to do here is get a professional involved. Give us some scenarios that people can say, all right, okay, this is what it's going to cost to tear it down. And he has the insight because he's worked on these things. We don't know what type of partnerships we could have. We don't know that. Let's get somebody that's done this stuff and figure out if there is a way of doing something. Maybe there isn't. But let's get something together so we can at least give everybody something to go by. And not make the decision that because that parking lot is coming in, you can't sell the building. Well, that's your opinion. That's not my opinion. It might not be somebody else's. But we all have our opinions, Joe. You might be right. I might be right. But let's just put the facts on the table. That's all I'm asking. And basically, we're, we're really asking for this because the selectman asked us to find the answers, and either the selectman will make the decision, or it'll go to town meeting, like we had the day this, this past year, about what happened all in that ball field, and all that changed. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, our group or your group should be making the decision. We're just here to get information so other people above us can do it. And maybe all the town's people at um, town meeting. But, but yeah, I, I'm sure I have my agenda. And that's, I want to support the master plan and what the people want. The people, 65% of the people want to save that building. And that's my personal agenda. Well, everybody, but, everybody see, has agendas. If, if one of my committee members says this is the best practice, best use for CPA money, that's what I'm going to fight for. Well, right now we're just talking about this particular project, right. the, 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 the two halves. And, and I think the argument, why well, spend money on something we're going to have to tear down, is a legitimate part of it. Of course it is. But, you know, you have answers for it, and this discussion will continue. We're not going to stop it tonight. I just want to add that before we make, before the town makes the decision to tear that building down, which is where they may end up. That, we as a town should exhaust every possibility of looking, every possible alternative. That's how the master plan. And we've done, we've done some of it, but I don't think we've done enough. Hold on, let me get the new master plan. It's <laughs> not in there, I think. So. That, that's all I mean. I'd like to move on. No, yes, but, um, I'm a little should hesitant this, to ask, but does anyone have any other comments or questions? Should about? this, should it, because he's just asking for one round, 18,000, should it be broken up at that time? Uh, we can decide to do that if we want. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a technical matter, but there's a uh, uh, result of the Let, Let's think about it. You know, um, we're, we're, we're not allowed to meet as a committee without uh, posting it. But one or two committee members can talk about things amongst themselves. And I would encourage you in the next two weeks to reach out to other members and clarify your ideas. Because these are difficult decisions about proposals that are, you know, on the line, near the line, yeah. approaching the line. Well, the last thing I want to ever see is that building get knocked down. I, I, I would not want to see that at all. And, and I don't see, I, I would love to see, you know, I don't see what the town can use it for. But I think that down the road, um, putting an historic, you know, if it has um, deed restrictions, um, that it has to stay, and this is what it has to look at, look like, but, you know, it's not going to cost $22 million for someone else to fix it up. And that's, it only costs the that's town true. $22 million. Yeah, it costs us $22 million. It costs someone else half that. But, no, a third of that. A third of that. That's true. And that's the sad part Even that we're all But if it stays looking like what it looks like, that's what I want to see.
longer we have put off these repairs, and we've been talking about this for seven years. Fixing that. This is the latest numbers. This is the building. Yeah. This is well, where we can't get the money. We can't get these numbers. numbers. We can't get the money. So now it's going to cost more money. I'm surprised you didn't ask for more. Here you'll see. I think that I'm just the amount of money that they need to do the job. Right. And then we say, okay, now we've got a little bit of time. So this is this one. We let it go. Okay. And in that building, it looks this is all on the market all the time. I wouldn't want to put a new roof on it, but put a little patch on it just so it stops something from well, coming we did, in. We did quite a bit of work on the roof back a few years ago. But it's, yeah, it's, it's a slate roof, and you got to keep. Is this is just the patch, yeah. right? Yeah. It's just a patch, right. so it stops There's the damage. There's a patch around the yeah. area. There's a lot of slate missing on the one side uh, uh, where the chimney is, and we want to get that back on. And it costs a lot of money just to put slate back on. Yeah, yeah slate's expensive, hmm. but let's just keep it dry anyway. Well, could you do something different as a temporary for less money? I mean, if you're just as a well, I mean something like that. Seriously, I mean, if it, certainly we can. I'm I'm just saying because we're just we're not, we're only doing it just to patch it so it stops raining in. I mean, they're gonna someone's gonna probably put a new roof on it. I mean, that's probably part of the 22 million, a whole new roof. Wow. So why put spend good material if it's just a yeah, Band-Aid. Slate at 100 years, it's not the slate that gives, it's the, uh, the nails. They oh. rust away. So that's what we're facing. Okay, let's, uh, uh, thank you for your passion. Yeah, and certainly if you want to mod want me to modify the wording slightly, and you have got a good point because we've got to change the scenario a little bit based on the mm -hmm. discussion I had with Andy. And, and if you want them split, I can do that. Just call me and tell me, okay. and I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Whatever, whatever helps. Right. Actually, we don't even have to ask you. We can just do it. But huh? we don't have to ask you. We can just do it. You want me to do it? No, no. No, I'm just saying that we can do whatever we want. We're the CPA committee. <laughs> That's how it works. Okay, thank you for the time. OK. Uh, Alan, you've been waiting patiently. You want to go next? About the cemeteries? Oh, except yeah. the last thing nobody else has to do. Uh, no, no, there's a bunch more. Yeah, there's one more. There's the I mean, I'd be happy to be last. I've been talking about Oh, all right. <laughs> so, Willie, you're up. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you for your time. Thank you. your passion. Appreciate it. Okay. You, uh, did, it, did you people read the request for funds? Um, well, I just when I got in here, ever so briefly while we're here. Yeah. By way of clarification, I have the up to date, and the figures he was quoted from were the original master plan. He said was, that. He said uh, that. Yes, so it's not in this. Oh, yeah. well, no, but that depends on how Hmm? Well, maybe the numbers would have been, maybe the numbers would have been right. Maybe they wouldn't have been. It's like it's all water under the dam. Okay, we, over the dam. We proposed this uh, last, <laughs> yes. last year, and we didn't have an anything uh, specific and laid out. We got to get this time very put a little time into it. And uh, that's where the dollar difference came from. Yeah. And the total cost. Place the old single plate glass or windows that are in. They're big and single, and lots and lots. There's a lot of money. So the total cost of the project would be two hundred and forty-eight thousand six hundred eighty-eight dollars. Now the CPA funds what we're requesting is one hundred and seventy-four thousand eighty-two dollars. Cost that we would share here is seventy-four thousand six hundred and six dollars and forty cents, which is thirty percent of the bill. Uh, the project would help oh, oh, oh. the cost of sharing is thirty percent of the total. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay, so CPA is paying. 70 percent. 30 percent is coming from somewhere else. Okay, the Hadley 
housing authority needs to install new windows into the 40, I believe, and disable the electrical report. This project would involve removing uh, 120 original casement, easement windows and installing 40 new 24 by 40 double hung windows uh, at uh, $1,396.80. That's installed. Mm -hmm. uh, 40 new 72 by 6 twin double hung windows. Uh, $2,482.80 each installed. And 40 new 48 by 59 inch twin double hung windows at $2,337.60 each installed. Housing Authority goals are to retain the integrity and structure of the buildings that go to court to create a more energy efficient environment. The project of installing the new windows into the 40 units of Golden Court fulfilled the CPA committee guidelines because it will retain the integrity and structure of having affordable housing for years to come. Also, the installation of new energy efficient windows will provide less of a burden on the fossil fuel in the future. That's it. Do, um, what, what account is this coming out of the historic set aside or the general fund? Of the okay, now will there be a problem? Do you think because are these windows going to be like vinyl or anything? Because we couldn't do work at Town Hall because we could we could authorize removal of the windows, rebuild them, and reinstall the old windows. That was historic, right? Yeah, uh, I so don't because know. it was historic, and this is, would be housing. Okay, maybe okay. that's the difference. I don't know, but I don't know if CPA. And this is one thing that Andy is forwarding to Boston, right? Well, I just saw it oh, tonight. So you just saw it tonight. I don't know if you can replace it with these type of windows. I just don't know. Maybe it's fine, and everything is on the door. I don't know. Uh, you mean for the looks? Yeah. Oh, what well, well, No, I know. It, 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 it's a silly thing, and I realize it, yeah. and I know that. And yeah, we yeah. went through this whole rigmarole at Town Hall. Yeah. Amy's yeah. point was a good one, though. It's coming out of a different. Yeah. It's coming it's out of a coming different. It's coming out of historical. Account. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So uh, we, we just need to check and make sure that it's okay. It'd be more efficient because this is only, these windows are only single paint. And, and that would make them a lot more efficient. But uh, we, we've, already, we've already started changing the old uh, oil fire furnaces to the smaller, more efficient two furnaces instead of the one for the buildings. Because uh, when one goes down, two buildings go down with heat. Mm -hmm. So we uh, put in two separate burners, so one goes down, the other one takes it. Yeah. And they don't move. So we're doing a lot of changes and additions, trying to go with uh, energy efficient stuff. You know, and the looks. And I'm pretty sure uh, that this came up uh, last time when we talked about the you know, last year about the looks. And uh, Mary checked the windows and everything. Work with window work. Window work right up here on, mm -hmm. on Russell Street. Is that where this quote came from? That's right. Window works? Yep. So when we go to get more quotes, it's very, it's very likely we could be lower than that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you only got the one quote, right? Uh, I. No, I think Mary got another quote from somebody else, but that's all right. Okay. So you don't say no that way. Sure. You get it twice. Problem. Uh, but and that's installed. Take out the old ones and install the new ones. Okay. 
think we all agree on the need for new windows in those units. The question is whether it's approved use for CPA. Right. Um, now, there have been other towns that have used CPA money for similar projects in private buildings, mm -hmm. let alone yeah. buildings owned by the town. But that doesn't mean it's approved use. Yeah, but this is a special housing because it's... it's, it's Right, right. Well, the, the other thing I'd want to say is that I, personally, yeah. I feel we should give the housing authority as wide a latitude as we can because they've got to start using that money. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know. So, yeah. but but if yeah, it's, but if it's not approved use, you know, if it's remote, then yeah. you have to yeah. figure yeah, out. I just want to check. Yeah, I, I just sure because all... it's just because of the top, who can go in it. It's it's for it's. Um, it's affordable housing, right? right. It's, 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 so that's that's why it's under housing. It's not just any apartment complex. Right, right. It's right. And another issue is that what I've heard is people can't open the windows. Yeah. They, they just physically can't do it. And the windows they can open, uh, I think, to put an air conditioner in, they have to, uh, okay. Okay. they have problems with getting an air conditioner in a window in a bedroom where they need the air conditioning in the second kitchen and the living room. Well, and again, you know, CPA money so people can put in air conditioners. I, well, I don't uh, know. We don't but, want that. Uh, you know? Well, well you just don't but say we'll that. Have, we'll have to new windows. windows. Right. I, I've said it before. There is no CPA police. Towns use CPA money for all kinds of stuff that's not approved use. And it's, it could be a big leap for us because we tried to do stuff you know, like that. It's, your, it's the town's money. It's the town's money. Yeah. It's not the state's money. Well, well some well, part of it is. Once well, well, they, they, they give it to Hadley. Well, once they give it to some money, right. Yeah, yeah, and this housing authority operates on a real weird well, yeah. way. It's archaic at best. I'm, I'm not getting anything else in town. No, no, it's just because you yeah, guys can't just, the, the housing authority is dictated to by the state, and the state says, thou shalt do this, and thou shalt do that, and whether or not the town of Hadley has the funds for it, the state says, no, tough shit, excuse my English. That's exactly right. But the town of Hadley does have the money for it. Uh, <laughs> it is it's a different fund. Yeah. We just have to make sure that it's kosher, that's all. Well, and I can tell you what happened in Amherst. Our uh, Chestnut Court got a ton of money to redo their uh, kitchens. And um, the uh, Ann Whalen House um, also got a ton of money to redo their kitchens. So um, and that was CPA money. Well, and they went out to, uh, the they, they went into debt for it. Right, but kit kitchens are considered capital improvements to public assets, which is a Rather than windows? Windows, it, does it increase the value of the properties to replace the windows? Yeah. If it does, then that's an argument for yes. That, that way we can get rid of some of these flowers. So they probably read that there's little problems where we want to cut these vines up and out the front of the windows. Well, the windows are so big, when they get the vines here, it's added protection mm -hmm. from the wind. Sun, you know, whereas if they had no windows. Could, could you have the, um, who's the person? Mary. <coughs> Mary. Mary, could you have yeah. her email me a copy of this proposal so I can send it to Boston? Should I, should I call her or do you want to do it? Yeah. You have an actual one, Richard? Yeah. You want an email copy? I want an uh, email copy so I can send it electronically to the CPA. Yeah, yeah, that's that's no, no, I want, I want an electronic copy. Oh, oh I just want a paper copy. Oh, okay. And the housing authority paid to replace the roofs about 10 yeah. years ago here. Yeah, yeah. Joe. Yeah. Joe. Yeah, I... We put in all new roofs. Yeah, I had issues with that. That's all in the past. Yeah, that's all in the past. That's correct. Yeah, they did, the, did that. And um, we have a little bit of other, but we got some money for something else. 
and then we put up fences. Yeah, and the, uh, the security system and the door. Yeah. 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 Question: Where the thirty percent? Where does that come? $23,000 that you gave us. Okay. 
And you also gave us uh, $12,000 per war doing studies of the other four uh, cemeteries so we know what we need to do. Those have been completed. Those studies have been completed. And two of them are here. It's Old Hadley and Plainville, because that's what we want to look. Joe said you need those. Yeah. All this stuff is d digital. If anybody wants to have a, their own co copy, I didn't print out seven copies of the stuff. No, right. So which one are we discussing oh, okay. first? Okay. So we're going to discuss Plainville first. Okay. okay. If I can just back up a little bit and just give you an update on the, on the projects from last year. So we had $23,000 to Hockenham. We went out to bid and uh, we're spending $11,375. So we will be giving you back $11,000. Okay. Oh. It came in really low. Well. Did. Um, were we able to do, do do that at this town meeting? We'll do what? You, you have to get, to get oh, permission from town meeting to, to, to give it back. Yeah. Yeah. If we don't do it this time, we'll do it in the spring. We're not going to spend okay. it. Fine. Okay. Okay. Well, what was those numbers again? It, we, we had twenty-three thousand dollars from you folks. Twenty-three. For okay. Room. We only are spending eleven thousand three seventy-five, and, and actually that includes four more. We went 53, but we had we found four more that needed to be done, so we did a changeover. Um, but that still came out to only 11,375. Okay. So we'll be returning 11,625. When I don't know, but it probably won't be this town meeting because the project won't be get done until the end of September. Okay. Okay. But okay. I won't forget. Now on the assessments, we had 12,000 dollars. It cost us for the four assessments 10,700. So you're going to get 1,300 bucks back. So so we're doing pretty good so far. Okay. Except that we got to spend some money to fix the, to actually fix the gravestone. Mm -hmm. So we got the four reports back, um, and uh, just to summarize all four of them, we're only asking you for two, to do two this year and two next year because there are a lot, a lot to do. We, even if we had the money, we couldn't manage them all. Is it next year or next cycle, like six months? No, uh, it'll be next fall. Okay. Uh, at least that's the way it looks now. Because okay. they. If we get approval to do this, these two, it'll take them till the end of next summer to get them done. Okay. So, okay. Plainville, yeah, So the Plainville and Old, Plainville has 45 stones that need to be fixed, and these are priority ones. These aren't just every stone. Every stone needs some work, mm -hmm. but we just have to look at the high priority ones, the ones that are safe, ones that are falling down already, broken, leaning, falling apart. Okay, priority one. Um, and so in this 40, in Plainville, there's 45 priority one stones. Um, and that, that's going to cost, uh, the total project will be 28,000. We're going to ask for 25. Correct. Um, in Old Hadley, which is bigger, uh, and this is the central part of Old Hadley. Old Hadley has three sections, the colonial part, the 19th century part, and the current part. We're asking, this is the 19th century one. And this is, uh, 113 stones for $85,000, and we're asking for 82 for that. Um, next year, um, according to those reports, North Hadley has 94, that will cost 65,000, and Russellville has 42, and that will cost 33. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about about $100,000 this year, about $100,000 next year. That's that's the long-term, big picture. Another thing to keep in mind is we have never done these gravestones in any systematic way except once. Now Fred Oakley, remember, he did he did them, okay, himself because he was a conservative, qualified conservative. Mostly the old part of Old Hadley, and a few here and there. Um, but the last time actually that we had at the town has actually spent serious money in a systematic gravestone repair was 1936 when they had the flood and the gravestones were all over the place. So they had to put them back as best they could. But we really have never done, uh, we did spruce up the cemeteries for the 350th, but it was mostly fencing. Right. Fencing and trees, no gravestones. Right. I mean, Fred did a few, but okay. And then the Hockenham that we, we're doing now. So, so it's been, you know, it's been Nine years. <laughs> a while. I don't, this is not something we're going to be doing every five or 10 years. Every nine okay. years. Okay. Yeah, maybe, well. And one of the things we can do once we get these really bad ones straightened out is that we can train people, if the DPW, we can hire another person someday, you know, we can actually train people to do, the, do some of the easy stuff, cleaning them off, you know, 
fixing a small one, raising up a marker. We don't have to go out to get professionals to do this. We can do it ourselves. But we need to, and training doesn't cost a thousand two dollars a thousand. That, so that's the kind of the long-term plan for the cemeteries, um, at least in my mind. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, the first one is Plainville, and that's this study here. This and this includes a spreadsheet of all the priority ones with what has to be done, Plainville. pictures of each one, and then at the end, how you go about doing it. So this is like we take go out and we did this. This is the bid document, basically. How much is it going to cost to do this? I have digital copies of this. If yeah. you're interested, it may take a long time to down. Yeah, I have. <laughs> you know, that's why I did center on everything. But if anybody wants that report digitally, it's a PDF. I can send it to anybody who wants it. Could you put one in the library? Sure. Yep. Absolutely. It'll be there for us. Yep. So um, this is coming out of, you're asking, the total project's going to be 28000 Right. You're asking for twenty five to come out of the historical set aside. Right, exactly. Oh, by the way, I should mention we have received twenty four hundred dollars in donations from the Nash family. And the Nash family is one of the you know the early settlers and they're still around, some of them. Um, and oh, um, they live right next to Plainville Cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think that the Plainville Plainville section of of, of Hadley was settled by John Nash. Yeah. Helen Nash used to be the librarian. In, oh, really? In, yeah. in Hopkins. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Teachers. Any, yeah, yeah, really like, teacher but they've, ste they've stepped up. Most of them are professors and yeah. such, and they like history. Yeah. And, uh, and they've been talking to me Seventh about grade. for years about. <laughs> you know, and Plainville is a disaster. I mean, if you uh, it has more fallen stones than pr proportionally than any other cemetery for some reason. I don't, some people say, well, it's kind of up on a hill and exposed. I, Gary Bird thinks it's the sandy soil. I don't know. What, what, whatever. 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 They, but it looks terrible, and we need to fix it. So, uh, and, and we do have uh, 2,400 bucks um, that we can apply to this. Uh, so that's the first one. Uh, to, to, uh, I have the so, so, so you're asking for money to not do a study, because no, you already did, did the study. study. This is to do the work. This is to do the work. You got it. Okay. All right. Does anybody need the thing that Andy sent around hard copy? I have seven copies. Okay. Um, for, for which one? The plain one. I got that. You got it. Anybody else want one? Anybody else? Nope. I'll take a hard one. I'll put it on the okay. line. I'll give you two. You yeah. didn't ask for mine. Yeah. Okay. Give me yeah. Okay. Anybody else one? I, I, I. Okay. Thanks. And then plain, and then the next one. Are any questions about plain? No. I got pictures too. But I don't want to be here all night. <laughs> uh, you can't say that you're not well prepared. <laughs> Joe, Joe taught me to be prepared. <laughs> I don't think there's one question someone could ask you. You wouldn't know the answer. Well, how many, how many <laughs> gravestones are there? Uh, <laughs> uh, like there are I, I, counted, I counted them uh, <laughs> once to get a rough number, but uh, it depends on what you define as a head, as a as a gravestone. Sometimes it's the footstones. I mean, it, it gets complicated. Uh, sure. yeah, so yeah. I gave up trying to count them. Yeah. Uh, there's several hundred. We've got probably six thousand gravestone markers in all the cemeteries. God knows how many people are buried in them. Just no idea. Yeah, including a very interesting metal. It's probably about 10,000. So there's a plain there's a metal gravestone. Really? That they, that they have in Provincetown a lot. In the Provincetown Cemetery. Uh, here's okay. Old, anybody need on the old Abbey right up? Got it? Anybody need it? This, oh, is, yeah. a, this is again uh, 113 stones. And. Um, uh, 133 stones. Uh, no, 113. Oh, no, I'm sorry, you're right, 133. Where did I get 113? That's what I know. 133, right? That's what it says. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that's going to cost. 133, right? It's 133, it's a better deal. Yeah. It is a better deal, I like guess. It. So it's not a good deal. Yeah. And again, of course, we hope the bids will come in lower like they did last time, but we never know. Um, so. We're going to ask for 
what happened. No, it's the same, it's, it's the same thing. Same, same deal. Yeah. And the report's there. Yeah. And the last thing we're asking for this year, and this is something that has been kicking around forever. Right, because oh the Hockenheim fence, there was a discrepancy as to whether the fence is on cemetery property oh, or, I never heard the, that one. or the road property. Well, they, they widened the road. That's why it's so close to the road. And there was a discrepancy where CBA couldn't do anything because nobody knew what, where the boundaries were. Actually, I never heard that one, but I've heard, well, we couldn't do anything because it's a WPA wall. We got the historical commission's got to weigh in. The mass yeah. historical's got to weigh in. I mean, how do you do it, you know? Right. And this has been kicking around for at least 15 years. Yes. And the wall, you know, there's a picture of the wall. Oh, the yeah. middle part is gone. Right, okay. yeah. Um, a lot of fire so, are buried there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 So what we, and we, we, and we, I met with the uh, village, I keep calling it the village people, but it's actually the village association. Yeah. <laughs> great. And, uh, Last year, we talked about, well, what should we do? How can we move this forward instead of just kicking the can down the road all the time? You know, it's got to be done right. It's got to be done respectfully, and it's got to be done. And we don't really know what. Should we move the wall closer? You know, the cemetery, should we? I mean, there's all kinds of questions. that, And we've tried to find the answers. We really can't. It's, just, it's, it's a little bit too many moving pieces. So we came down to, let's, and we hate to do this, but let's do a study. Okay, let's hire somebody who knows about these things, who can walk us through, just like with the Russell School, well, you know, not as complicated, I think, and tell us what are our options here, and, and who needs to approve it if we do this or that, how much is it going to cost, okay, um, and those kinds of things. Can we use the stones that are there and rebuild it? Uh, there's all kinds of things that are possibilities that are out there. Um, and. Uh, I mean, we could go back to the original fence, which is not stone, which was a picket fence. That's not going to happen because the reason they put the stone fence there was to protect the cemetery from the snow plows and the cars that come whizzing around that corner because the stones are so close, especially since they widened the road. So for, it serves a purpose, even though it's taken a beating. So we'd like to re we'd like to fix it up, replace it, repair it, some you know some combination of things, but we really don't know what makes sense, what's allowable, and what is feasible from a cost point of view. So we're hoping, we're asking for $5,000 to do, do a study like this. Hopefully it won't be as common. You know. Okay, so the money that you're asking for is to do a, is to do a proposal. Yeah, our study. To, our study. To, 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 to result of the proposal. Okay. a study to see what needs to be done and what the total cost would be yeah. to right. option one, option two, option yep. three with that fence. Yep. Okay. Yep. So the issue about is it on state property, is it on yep. private property yep. will be rectified. It would have to be resolved. That's a test okay. so I'm is gonna make a note of that. This is to do a study. Because yep. the first eons ago, fifteen years, eighteen years yep. ago. They, they didn't put in a, a number of things. Yeah. And it turned out, no, what the number, I don't know where they got the number, I think it was like $34,000 or something like that. Whatever. But Whatever it was, but they but found out that they, they just, it just didn't, uh, just for a number of reasons. It just yeah, I remember it being yeah. a WPA thing, and yeah. the big thing was... The state property. Yeah. Funny, I didn't see that in the notes, but I'll go back and look. Yeah. I'll take, but it, it makes sense, because it is damn close. Yeah, that, that was the issue, because no one knew... Maybe the state will pay for it. Maybe, <laughs> you know? Who knows? It's more likely the state will say you have to take it down. Yeah, 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 yeah. And put up, and put up you know, a metal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is, and this is to fund the study. Yeah, exactly. That's five thousand. Yeah. Respect for the request, but we don't have to keep any money for that. Cemetery committee do have trust funds if it's supposed to be for perpetual care. Um, and does the town give us? The town does give us about eighteen thousand dollars to mow. And that's not and by the way, DPW does that now because of the change that we did. We put through 
in the town meeting last year, where it finally, we finally resolved, you know, because we're all going like this. And the, the 209 charter from DPW clearly says they're responsible for the cemeteries. Now, we don't want to go away as a committee. We want to advise, we want to do things like this. But day to day, um, and they, they established a foreman position, Gary Bird, who's been doing this all his life, he's the foreman. So they're responsible for the contracts for mowing, uh, that, that money that the town gives, I think it's about 18000 something like that a year. They administer that. Uh, they do the burials, they do the interments, uh, all the maintenance stuff. So the cemetery committee will, will advise on the system. People come call us up and say, where's my long lost relative buried? We can help find that. Mm -hmm. uh, or if they, or if there's something that needs to be done like this, we can work, we can do this heavy lifting for that. Uh, the, uh, the DPW obviously knows about this, but Chris will go forward and Gary said, yep, I can go ahead, the CPA, so at their approval. I also went to the historical commission to tell them, talk about that, and they said, yes, fine. I wasn't there. Yeah, we were there, but everybody else <coughs> supports. So I do have support from the historical commission, uh, the Hadley, uh, the Hockenham folks, and the DPW for this. Okay. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Talk too much. Done a lot. <laughs> All right. Any any questions or comments about these three? These are all going to be separate items. Yeah, it will be separate. Tom, that, that, that's how I wrote it down. I get it. And number 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 eight is the Hockenham. Number seven is the Old Hadley. Number six is Plainville. <laughs> Do we agree that this is approved use? That I don't know. Come on, Edward. I, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. I could show you 150 projects of those state just like these. If this is, if this is the historic, I don't know what it is. I mean, we gave him the money for the study. I saw it. Oh, for the study? Sure. I'm, no, yeah, I mean, in the study. Oh, okay. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. But I mean, but if you're going to. If it's going to do, do the project, we just, again, we just want to yeah, yeah. cover our butt. You, 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 did, you approved. You approved Hocking Up last year. Yeah. And there was no, uh, you know, nobody's coming down on me. For, you know, I, I can guarantee you 110% that this is this meets the CPA requirements. Well, we'll we're, we're it's just something I always ask. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, fly it by them. Right. Yeah. We just want to make sure yeah. if by changing a word or two you can strengthen oh, it, yeah, that's sure. what yeah. we want to do. Uh, okay, so no questions about this one? No. All right. Can I, need, can I grab those back? Yep. And I can, anybody who wants, to, wants that, I will uh, send a digital version of it, and I will put one copy in the library. I mean, we're going to need this to go out to bid on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we get a, if we get a few yeah, I think it's a good document for the library to have, you know, the yeah. record. Oh, yeah, sure. Photos and yeah. yeah, that's nice. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I read the whole thing online, and they really did a very thorough oh, yeah. job. Yeah. You know, it's not yeah. just like clean, 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 clean. clean. Well, this, this woman who did this, I mean, she, we had, a, we selected her because she was a little bitter. I mean, she, she deals with it on the restoration work. But she, she was trained by Fred Oakley. Okay. Yeah. And Rosalind probably. And Rosalind trained Fred. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so they take the mold off? They can. Yeah, that's not, that, that's actually. The, it says dirt. Yeah, they, uh, there's, there's ways of doing it. It's basically water. <laughs> You have to be very, very delicate, very careful how you do this stuff. But that's not the main problem with these. It's just incidental. It's why you, since you're going to straighten it out, you're going to clean. But we're not going to. We're not just going in there just to clean the gravestone. That's not a higher priority. Okay. I need a number a couple. I've never been. This is going to be, it's going to be like if all these get with a town meeting, it's going to be like no, ten separate articles. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot. No, guys are important. Just uh -huh. We just have money. Yeah. But usually the CPA things are pretty quick. Either that or give it to the town so they can pay the bill. Well, that I, th I hope we're going to.